All right. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, Team Osprey Sprint Review and Demo. Uh, Jess is away, uh, some of you might know. She's been away this, this sprint uh, for a very special uh, occasion in her life. Um, and um, I am going to be the acting, I have been the acting product owner in her absence. And so uh, today for today's sprint review and demo, you get me instead of her uh, talking more than I usually do. Uh, just a heads up today that I'm recording this session and uh, portions of this recording or the entire recording uh, will be made available internally and externally. Uh, and then before I go any further, I want to acknowledge that uh, some of us, like myself, uh, live and work in the Victoria area uh, and conduct uh, much of our government business and live on the traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking peoples. Uh, today, they're known as the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. Um, others on this call, if you're joining from other traditional territories, I invite you to share that in the chat. Um, so as Many of you who have been on, uh, been to our sprint reviews in the past, uh, you would be aware already that uh, our team is working on digital transformation priorities within BC Parks. And currently we're focusing on enabling park operators to enter in monthly attendance and revenue data uh, into an application that we're going to build or we are building uh, so that it is that data becomes available to the regional and the headquarter BC Park staff uh, so that they can make better decisions moving forward around the park use. Uh, so present here today from uh, our team is myself, uh, Mars Romer, the Scrum Master and the Acting Product Owner while Jessica is away. Um, but we have a cross-functional development team, which together is responsible for doing everything you're going to see today being demoed, uh, plus more. So this includes all the architecture, the coding, data modeling, user research, user flow, screen designs, user interface, quality control, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that incredible team is comprised of Nicole Del Rey, Jane Mountain, Mark Lise, uh, Daniel Trong, Cameron Pettit, Goldie Sohar and Meredith Olson Meyer. Uh, we also get help from um, the IT professionals within the division as well, uh, with the data modeling and the um, the architecture, etc. As we go along. So a sprint review. If you haven't been to one before, or you haven't been to ours before. It's uh, basically just an informal meeting between ourselves uh, and the key stakeholders and the larger parks uh, team. Uh, it's held at the end of two weeks uh, of work, which is what a sprint is. Uh, during that time, we are designing, planning, and developing the next iteration of the product I just mentioned. So today, we're going to show you what has been done. Uh, we're going to give you a little demo uh, of the progress we've made uh, in the last sprint or two. Uh, and then we're hoping to get feedback from you during, the sp uh, during today's demo. Uh, and then we're going to use that to then make decisions moving forward uh, for what we're going to build in the next iterations. Uh, this won't be your only opportunity, however. If you want to reach out to us afterwards, please feel free to. Um, I this, this week, you can reach out to myself, and then uh, Jessica will be back next week, and we, you can reach out to her if you've got some other feedback. Uh, as we do the demo, please raise your hand, uh, virtual hand, or uh, just type in your message or feedback uh, into the Teams chat, and uh, we our team will together address it as we go along. Uh, you can also feel free to just come off mute and uh, speak. So uh, today's uh, the sprint was sprint thirteen. Uh, we dubbed it the Mount Pope Provincial Park. Uh, it is on the uh, traditional territories of the Dakil-speaking peoples. I hope I said that right. Uh, and it ran from April sixth to the twentieth. And this is a nice view of the park. Uh, so our sprint, uh, this is our burndown chart. Is uh, It shows you um, or shows us uh, how we are doing during the two week period uh, in terms of the effort of work that we have uh, committed to take on and how fast we're burning through that work. Uh, so the green line indicates the ideal guideline of how we should be moving through the sprint. Uh, the red line shows the remaining work 
Um, and as we go along through the sprint, that gets decreased. And sometimes you'll see a little blip of increase here and there where we decide to bring in uh, some work that we didn't think about earlier before we started the sprint. Um, a lot of the work right now is waiting to be uh, QA'd and tested. So for that reason, we are expecting um, either today or tomorrow for us to finish a lot of the work that we were planning to get done. Um, so we got very close to finishing um, everything. However, everything is just waiting to be tested right now. So our goals for Sprint 13, um, we had three goals. One was that users can enter attendance and revenue data into the system. Um, and then the second goal was for us to investigate how we're going to go around giving access and roles and permissions uh, to the staff who are going to be entering the information into attendance and revenue. So these are the park operators um, who are going to be using the system. Uh, and then hoping to also leverage what we find out here on the day use pass system that we have built in the past. Uh, and then the third goal was to update uh, text on the day use pass system to reflect the end of the winter passes. So the first goal we have, like I said, we are, um, we've done most of the work. Uh, it is sitting in test waiting to be tested. And so we're gonna show you that today. Uh, we will most likely come across bugs because this, this hasn't been tested, so just bear with us. Um, and then the second goal has been completed. Um, we have decided that we're going to go with a uh, BCE ID and BC services card, um, use both those to uh, grant roles and permissions, um, at least that's the way we're leading at this point. Uh, and the third goal we didn't get to, uh, and so we're going to take that on again in the upcoming sprint. So we're going to demo to you today um, uh, that we have um, all the parks and sub areas data loaded in our system. Uh, this is the real data that's live. Um, and then we're gonna show you that we can now enter data um, in the attendance and revenue system, uh, and then also be able to view that data and edit that data. So. Uh, I'm going to, at this point, stop sharing my screen and turn it over to the development team to share their screen and start demoing the work. Okay, so I guess uh, first thing we will look at uh, is the selection of uh, uh, parks and sub areas and whatnot. Um, this is the test environment, so uh, we've got uh, a few things in flight, but we'll just go through it anyways. Um, so go ahead and select a date. Uh, and you'll date, uh, grab a park, maybe Adams Lake Park. Um, and as you type, you start getting a type ahead there. Um, we've we've got it limited to like 10 parks at the moment that you see. Otherwise, um, you know, because we've got fully live data, uh, you know, we've got every single park uh, available here. Um, so it would just be kind of unruly to, to have the long listing. But uh, this was uh, supported by a task in the sprint to uh, take the spreadsheet that came from uh the team and uh you know convert it get it into our database and then to wire it up through a full fully fledged api that's been built out um and this is the result so yeah let's go ahead and select adams lake park and then we can pick uh the bush creek uh sub area and we'll just go to that and that should be a front country and a day use uh thing there yep so if you click into one of those you'll see records some of these records they might have data they might not this is all again uh dependent upon how we've you know seeded just some random values here but daniel will show you uh, a bit more of that later um we can go and select through some other parks um like uh let's try akamina aka m and uh yeah you update akamina 
Yep. And then maybe the the backcountry one. That'll show a backcountry camping and a day use. There we go. And then another park we could probably look at. Uh, maybe we could do Alice Lake, uh, Alice Lake Park, and then Alice Lake. And that should give us, um, I think, a front country and a group uh, camping. By the way, um, if you don't mind, Mark, I'm just going to jump in. You may not on your screen see a drop down menu for the sub area. Uh, as um, we're navigating to this. And that's a Teams issue with screen sharing. For some reason, that one doesn't show. Um, but uh, it does It does actually have a drop down. And if um, at some point we'll get Daniel to uh, share his, uh, his entire screen, and that will make it obvious that we can see that sub area drop down. I can show it right now, one sec. Yeah, so maybe do, you could even do, well, any of these would work. Um, Cultus Lake. That's uh, showing has, up? The, uh, yep. Drop down? Okay. Yep. From, what was the one that you wanted? Uh, let's try Cultus Lake. Cultus, sure. Uh, Cultus Lake Park and then Maple Bay Cabins. Uh, let me switch back to the... This one. Cultus Lake and Maple Bay cabins. That will give us front country cabins. Uh, are you camping there? Uh, and then Elks Lake Park, we could do that one. Yep. And then uh, ACC backcountry cabin. We have a question from Om. Um, uh, are the sub areas cleared when the park name is cleared? Uh, I think that that part is still in in flight at the moment. Um, this isn't like fully uh, QA'd or or even like you know dev complete, but uh, uh, we will be having that option. So if you select a different park, then the sub areas should adjust accordingly and those are all the at least the parks daniel i don't know if there's other things you want to uh you want to show i think that covers all the activities but i can uh i can take over and show the rest of the stuff that we've added uh if you're done yep go for it okay so let's just go back to Watching the data. All right. So uh, there's a few other things that we added. Um, a little qual uh, bits of quality of life. Um, so let's seed this with Strathcona. And as we're adding stuff to the filters, um, it should also add stuff to the URL as well. Um, and as I change it, should fill those in and the reason why we've done this is so that we can copy this url and go to another tab and hopefully it takes us back to the exact same page um and this should hopefully work on uh forms when i get that implemented but for now it's only on the enter data page uh so in here we have an example of a day use that has already got a um, a filled out report for January uh, 2022. And we have an example of backcountry camping that has nothing in it. So when when there isn't a report available, it'll come up as dashes. Um, that means it this form has not been touched. Everything is undefined. Um, nothing has been done for this uh, form. But if there is something that has been touched, for example, they use, it'll either fill in um, the fields or put zeros in um, to signify that you actually want a zero rather than a dash undefined. Um, at the moment, we uh, 
have the ability to add and edit some of these forms. Um, the problem with the uh, with the form right now is that you it doesn't precede uh, the form. So if I go into it right now, uh, it won't actually load the data, but that's a quick change. Um, we just haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, but imagine this has a bunch of fives in it, <laughs> but we are able to edit this. So let's just set them all to tens. Be able to submit. Take us back to this page, um, and everything should be updated. Uh, so our editing is working right now. It's just there's a bit more work to do on the forms. Um, in terms of adding a net new uh, report, we are able to do that as well. should update accordingly. Uh, and these are read only screens, of course. And so long as there's something in the database, uh, it will pull it up. Uh, so for example, if I um, let's go back to home. Actually, let's refresh it completely. And let's choose a different date, like, uh, I don't know, let's do February instead. Strathcona, Bedwell. These things have not been filled out. Uh, and we should be able to, of course, fill out the form and then submit it again. Uh, is there anything I'm missing, guys? Um, Daniel, were you, or did we see all the different forms that we have developed for editing and entering data? Sure, if uh, we can show it again. Uh, Mark, if you want to tell me which parks to look for. Yeah, uh, do Adams Lake Park again. Okay. Let's just go Adams. Got a bit of a weird here. Let's see. January. Oh, maybe we'll do January. Um, let's go Adam. Adam. Yeah. yeah, so just a little background for those on the call that may not be familiar is that the, the way the contracts are written with the um, park operators, they are responsible for different sub areas. Um, and so depending on what sub area it is, it'll have a different screen for them. Some of them, the sub areas will have front country camping, uh, back country camping and boating, for example. This one has front country camping and day use. Um, so it all depends on what what their contract says for them to be reporting on and um looking after so um we have different we have seven different iterations um of these screens so this is one of them where you can see front country and day use and you can enter in the data here so, Mark, got the next one yeah we could do um well we've seen backcountry front country day use we could do group camping we could do uh alice lake alice lake and uh alice wake yeah regular not walk-in yeah. group yeah, camping. So that's got the group yeah and all these come with forms as well uh and should be you should be able to add and edit all their forms uh and we could find a boating one, which is Bear Creek. And then just Bear Creek. And Bear Creek. And there's boating. Boating should be there. Yeah, so you got Knights on Dog, Knights on Boys, all that. Um, and then we could do Cultus Lake for Front Country Cabins. And Maple Bay cabins. There's that one. 
Um, and then for backcountry, we've got Elks Lake Park, I think. And ACC backcountry cabin. And there we go. That's all of them. Um, that's great. I, I know we went through that pretty fast and I don't think everyone possibly had a chance to look at all the different data entry screens. Uh, if you want us to circle back to any of them, please let us know. Um, but we're also happy to show you this afterwards as well. Um, so like I said, this is all right now in the test environment. Uh, we haven't worked out all the bugs. We haven't really done any testing on it. So that'll be uh, some of the focus of our upcoming sprint as well. And then getting this all working and looking good. Um, and hopefully being able to release that uh, into prod at some point in the future. Jason. Hey, yeah, quick question. That all looks really good. I was just curious about the sort of forward looking on to um, whether you would be able to have a spatial representation of those of those sub areas. Um, in other words, I'm thinking about boundaries of backcountry camp areas and stuff like that. Um, I don't think that was on our radar. Um, it wasn't something that the, uh, and maybe Jane on the call can correct me who did a lot of the research. I don't think that was part of the ask or a requirement um, or even a wish, I think, from the park operators. But Jane, maybe you have more insight into that. Um, yeah, I hadn't heard that as a request or a need. Jason, what were you thinking of, like the utility of that would be? Uh, I think, <clears throat> I mean, it's more from my personal experience, but knowing if at a busy backcountry campsite that gets in danger of filling up, that you have a, an idea where you can and can't, can't camp. That's more from the public facing side. So I guess that's, uh, but I'm thinking about the data storage piece in behind and um, having that available or sort of baked into the data design in order to facilitate that need for the public. But I realize this system is probably not uh, public facing, right? It's not. No, it'll just be for the park operators and the headquarters staff and regional park staff to be using this. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, way, down, way down the backlog. <laughs> the yeah. Back. And I mean, it's, I think the way they're used to working, um, they sort of drop downs with the park and sub areas lends itself well to how they're used to working. Uh, and also, I think spatially showing some of that, uh, those sub areas, because they're not really, they're not always spatially easy to represent, might be a bit of a challenge. Um, but yeah, if we hear it from them that, hey, it would be a lot easier to just do spatially select things, uh, then we can put that on our radar. Mark? Thanks. Yeah, actually, just just to add on, uh, Jason, I, I kind of figured you were, where you were going with that. Um, if we did have uh, spatial data, then yeah, we could certainly attach that to our uh, our data elements here, like you know, for specifically the Elks Lake Park ACC Backcountry Cabin and the Backcountry Cabin section here. We we could certainly attach that in there, um, mainly because you know a lot of the code that we've borrowed uh, from other projects uh, also lends itself to uh, doing things geospatially. We just didn't have yeah, that data here, but we could we could easily put that in. And it, it's equally uh, proficient with points versus polygons because like cabins are easier to represent than a, you know, a, a polygon or land area. So yeah, yeah, I mean, we in the in the prior code base, uh, we we've we've represented points and or polys or multi lines or like, you know, it's it's fully uh, fully supported. So, you know, really anything that we got, um, we could probably throw it in there. Awesome. Hey, thanks. Thanks for that question, Jason. Um, anybody else have any other feedback or questions? Hey, Mars, Jeff here. Um, yeah, this is looking really good. Um, I like how everything, you know, is coming along. It looks like it fits together well. It looks like it's going to be pretty easy to use. I was just wondering, I, I, I know at one point we talked about, um, uh, like, like kind of having that, like how the parks are represented within the drop, like, like having a drop down. Um, 
I, I thought we I thought we had talked about it having kind of like a drop down type of head combo. Um, and I'm just thinking like from a park operator's perspective, you know, most most bundles, most agreements have, you know, six or seven or eight parks, like not not a whole lot, but it might it might be useful for them to have a drop down just so they can see um, see all the parks within their bundle and they don't, you know, forget about any like often they'll have like, you know, a, a, a few like larger parks and then a couple of like pretty small like day use only parks that you know, might might get for forgetting about forgotten about. So I'm I'm wondering if that's going to be built in or, um, or if it's yeah. going to be the type head. Yeah, that parks. A, I can I can respond to that. Um, sure. Some of this work is going to be refined once we have permissions in place. So, for right. a particular park operator, they might only have two parks available uh, in that drop down. So the view that we're looking at right now is sort of the um, BC parks view of it where you have access right. to all of the parks. Um, yeah, so we'll have to refine that once we kind of figure out how the permissions are going to work and get that in place. Yeah, I was okay. going to say, okay. yeah. so this is a list of parks that's given to a super admin. So it has know, over 200 parks, I think. Um, this is, in fact, a type ahead here. Um, so the type ahead already works. Um, I'm wondering for a bundle, uh, is there, do you know roughly how many they're going to be in a bundle? Like any, five any, parts, anywhere parts? from <laughs> anywhere from one to about 15. Uh, most of them, I would say, have, you know, six or seven parks. Uh, I, I would say that's the average. But, you know, some of them, some of our agreements are literally a thing. I mean, in the case of Strathcona, it's like half of a park, right? It's like divided divided into front country and back country. Um, so it really it really varies, but I would say most of them, you know, are in the, the six or seven range, so not a ton. Um, I, I think that I think the largest has about yeah, like fourteen or fifteen. So yeah, that should be covered by this drop down type head right. already. So yeah. Okay. Should perfect. Be able to um, yeah. Yeah, and, and, this... and then like I, I definitely like having the type ahead for the for the, like the the global BC parks view. Um, it might be worth adding in some kind of other um, field to delineate the data as well, um, whether we want to do section and ma management area or bundle or something. But um, but we can talk about that for the next next sprint. Gotcha. But it looks, I mean, overall, like very you know easy to use, very um, you know it, it's <laughs> it, it, easier on the eyes and doesn't look like it's from 1995, which is what our old system did. So <laughs> it's great. Thanks, Jeff. Anyone else have any other questions, comments? Yeah, is um, Patrick here. Um, I couldn't quite tell as we were jumping through there pretty quick, but do you have any of the calculations? Um, in in there yet? So, for example, going from gross to net total? No, none of that. Okay. We do. I, I believe it's done. Uh, however, um, hasn't been tested, so I can't confirm that it's accurate yet. Okay. But we can we can try right here. Daniel is showing. Um, yeah, I don't think the calculations are in yet. Um, but Cam has been working on the back end for that. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, when we have the configs that come in, they will apply themselves to this and fill out uh, according to the formula, gross revenue minus GST. Um, that will fill out the net revenue here and should work. At the moment, it doesn't. I think on some of the screens, maybe I had seen that it was uh, some of the formulas were. Yeah, working. so a few of them, like this one, there's a bit of a bug there. Um, but these ones are just simple addition, right? So it's not really, they're not formulas. Right. The the main formula, uh, at least I think uh, what we are referring to is inside uh, in the edit where it shows that, um, that gross revenue. Yeah, so that'll be next sprint then. Yeah. Awesome, thanks. Okay, anyone else? OK, 
Okay, thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Mark. Um, maybe we'll move to Nicole. I has some highlights and summary from uh, the user experience research that she has been doing. Sure, thanks, Mars. Um, so last week I had the opportunity to meet with uh, four camping reservation users to do some usability testing and gather some insights for the new reservation system. So I thought I would just touch on a few of the, the pieces that sort of stood out for me during these sessions. So a little bit of background on who these participants were. Uh, three of the, the participants were sort of self-proclaimed, uh, not very technically savvy. Two of them were senior citizens. Uh, we had one user testing on a Mac, uh, one on an iPhone, and two on laptops. So we really kind of had a nice uh, varied uh, approach to, to different perspectives. Um, out of the four users, only one had recently booked using the new system. The others had viewed, viewed the new system and most had created their accounts. So we had a lot of different uh, perspectives to go over. Um, overall, the participants really liked the new system and generally found it very easy to use. A, a few quotes that I heard were, I really like this one a lot better than the old system. This site on my phone is way easier to deal with than the old site. And I like this. It's very simple, very easy to read, and there's nothing confusing about this. So really positive experiences. Um, as far as the map, participants really like the map and they did find it very easy to toggle between um, viewing um, a map and a list view and the calendar view. However, some felt the map is quite small and you know maybe sometimes had difficulty really clicking into those pin pieces. Um, and then two of the participants did have some difficulty just finding the map. From the main page, uh, it's set within the uh, the park search field um, and all you need to do is sort of touch on that search but it wasn't quite obvious to them i think they were really looking for that visual you know click here for map so they did eventually find it but it, it was a little bit difficult for them um, another piece that sort of came out was uh one of the participants books almost uh mostly first come first serve campsites or, or likes to come to first come first serve campsites and likes to kind of research it and look to see uh what's open but had a real difficulty knowing how to find these types of campsites um, so what she had to do was really just make the assumption that the the orange dots on the map that are marked as restrictions uh, to mean that those are all first come first come first come first serve sites. So um, her quote was, "It just says restrictions, but actually that includes first come first serve. So I know it's open now. So perhaps you know a little bit of clarity uh, around that might be helpful for some of the users who who do like to use first come first serve." Um, and another piece that uh, was a bit confusing was the seniors discount during the booking process. So during the testing, um, an issue was highlighted regarding where in the process the seniors discount is accounted for. Two of the, the two seniors that we had were very confused and felt they had missed something during their booking process as the initial price that displays is full price. And they were unaware that the discounted rate comes later in that booking process and it was causing them to want to actually back out of the process because they had felt they had missed a step. Um, and both the, the participants acknowledged that, um, you know, within their profiles, they had uh, marked that they were seniors and were confused why the rate was uh, not applied. So I think it would be really beneficial within that process, even to add some textual elements that just, you know, state the the discounts will be applied later um, just to alleviate that confusion, have people backing out and perhaps uh, losing their bookings um, because they were confused. And finally, um, one participant asked a great question uh, saying, you know, can we save our favorite sites and parks so that it remembers and, you know, can jump to our favorite park when signing in? They thought it would be really helpful to sort of be able to build that list of favorites as they uh, find places they're interested in and maybe want to monitor for openings. Um, and we understand there is a similar feature in Canvas that can be turned on called Notify Me, 
which could could potentially do just this. Um, and it's something I think we can investigate for users going forward. <clears throat> so um, we didn't have a lot of users this time around and, and seeing as we only had the one, <clears throat> excuse me, that had actually booked the system, I'd really like to go out and do another round of uh, usability testing. <clears throat> and uh, I feel like there's more we can explore and more we can understand from this group. So I think we'll be going out again and doing a little bit more and getting some more feedback. <clears throat> Thanks. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Nicole? Um, I think what a we'll... question for Nicole. Yeah. Sorry, Mars. Go ahead. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering, uh, this is a bit of a newbie thing. To what extent has like persona work been completed? Um, and is there any way we can tie that into these user interviews? Just sort of like riffing off my ideas in the chat here of like how we package this information in the best way as like evidence to making decisions and prioritizing our backlog. Yeah, Jane, oh, you look like you want to say something. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say, like, we haven't done any formal persona kind of creation or interviews at all. Um, certainly, we can discuss further, like, if we think that that can be a useful tool for parks as a whole, then, yeah, we'd be more than happy to mm -hmm. do some research and, you know, combine the research that we've already done with some more persona-based research. A little bit, uh, you know, about how these sessions get booked is, um, you know, we have that list of of people who are interested of, you know, those 2000 odd folks. Um, and so we, we set these uh, sessions up on a monthly basis. So we don't always know what we're going to be talking about during these sessions because we like to use those for the sort of the most important thing in the moment. So the, the invites go out a little bit generally and we don't necessarily have a huge background on all these participants. So we never know, you know, who exactly we're gonna get, what experience level, what their age range is, or, you know, if they've used, you know, the piece uh, that we're talking about. So um, yeah, it's, we, you know, you do the best you can with uh, who shows up at these meetings. And so times like this, you know, sometimes you just really need to, we'll need to go out again and, and really find um, <clears throat> some specific users uh, for this specific need. But uh, yeah, certainly we can, you know, we have a wide range of different types of personas we can look into. I see, I see your comment here also looking for an infographic format. Um, I think that's a good idea. I unfortunately gave Nicole about 20 minutes to get ready to say something at the demo today. So um, I think that maybe down the road uh, we can work on that. Yep, sorry, I didn't have time this time around to yeah. pull anything together. <laughs> yeah. Just words. Easter happened. <laughs> okay. Um, we only have a few minutes left, so I think we will just uh, go on to uh, wrapping up here. So um, what's next for our upcoming sprints is to, like we saw today, um, we need to get the auto calculate working for the values uh, for attendance and revenue data that's entered in. So that's the GST, et cetera, that it needs to calculate. Um, also, we are going to start working towards having park operators um, be given a login option for attendance and revenue. And so those options would be a BCE ID or the BC services card. And then from there on, uh, find a way for them to log in and then just be able to see their, um, their parks that they're responsible for in their sub areas. Um, and so limiting that list for them as well. Um, so there's that work is a little bit still um, unknown as to how much effort that could be. We're going to try and figure that out today before we start our sprint. Um, but uh, a lot of research and work went into figuring out, hey, what do we want to do here and what can we do? But uh, we, we thought about going one way or the other. We thought about just using BCID or just services card. But in the end, it seems like it's going to be not much more effort to do both. Uh, and, and that'll hopefully capture also 
majority of the park operators that are going to be using the system. Uh, so that's the way we're leaning right now. Uh, and then the last thing is also we still need to finish the goal from last sprint of updating the text on the day use pass system to reflect the end of the winter um, passes. Um, so just a little roadmap of where we are. Uh, we're just ending sprint 13. We're um, sort of mid late April now. Um, and uh, we are going to continue to work on the attendance and revenue reporting until it, uh, we're done and get the MVS out at least. Um, but we are also starting to work on the day use past summer work soon, um, possibly doing a little bit of research this sprint. Um, and then there's ongoing user research and design happening um, as well throughout um, all of our sprints. Uh, and that's all we had for you today, um, but we have a couple of minutes left if there's any last comments or questions from anyone. Um, well, if I don't see any hands up, um, I think we can wrap up here, give you back a minute or two of your time. Um, thank you everyone for attending our sprint review and demo today. Uh, we look forward to having you next time. Um, and actually on that note, I should probably mention that um, I am going to be going on a six month TA to a different ministry. Um, so I will not be here at the next sprint review or for the next few, um, but I will be back after my TA is over. Um, so thanks everyone once again. Oh, I see a hand from Kevin. Is there a backfill in place yet, Mars? We are working on it. I haven't told Jessica yet because I didn't want to ruin her special <laughs> um, couple of weeks that she's having. Um, so, but I'm working on it with um, Tammy, my supervisor, as well as uh, we've asked OXD and others uh, to see if there's any scrum masters that could possibly backfill on uh, on quick notice. Roman, you've got your hand up. Yeah, Kevin, great question. Uh, with gratitude, Mars made me aware, and it was 